In today's video, I wanted to share the upgrade I have made to the script where we take a video as an input and we get like a description as the output. Uh, I think these upgrades make it even more exciting than before. So let's just have a look. So here we can kind of see the previous version, just a flow chart. You can see we took an MP4 input, we extracted frames, we converted it, we got a description based on only the video frames, right? And we ended up with a voiceover over this MP4 file in an MP3 format. Uh, but now let's take a look at the upgrades I made. So you can see basically in the green square here, we have the same thing as we had before. Uh, but now we added here, we kind of extract the audio clip to as an MP3 file and we introduce the Whisper API. So we can actually get both the description from the frames from the video and we can translate the, or transcribe the audio into an MP3 file using the Whisper uh, API of course. And then you can see in the orange part that is the new part here. So we combine the video visual description with the audio description. And this gives a more full picture of what the video is about, right? And then we can pass this to a TTS API so we can get this in a voice format. We can also print it out as just a text. Uh, I think in this video we're just gonna pass it as a spoken report, right? And I think this improved the result a bit. So I just wanted to share this. I think it was pretty cool. So yeah, let's just get into it. I thought I'd just quickly show you kind of the added functions I did to implement this. If you want to watch the video about the full code here, you can just go back to the video. I think it's called voiceover generation with AI or something. You can find that in the description below. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can see we added a function to extract the audio from the video. So basically extract audio. This is going to be an mp3 format. And then we added a function to transcribe the audio using Whisper. So it's pretty simple. This is basically it, right? So this is also an API from OpenAI, but uh, this is also available as open source if you want to try that. But yeah, that is basically the functions we added. We also have to add something called like get rewritten description because you can see here we have something called combined text. So we want to combine the video description with the audio transcription. And here we need to create a prompt. So use the video description to describe what's happening in the video. And also use the audio transcription to complement the analysis into a spoken report. And you can see I put in like plus prompt. This has something to do like with the video duration and the word count. This is, I go more into detail in this in the previous video. But basically we want to set a word count and we want to kind of fetch the video duration so we don't get the description that is going to be too long, right? That is basically the ID behind that. But yeah, uh, other than that, it's pretty much the same. But we ended up with like a rev revised description instead of just from the frames from the video. Uh, and I just think that's it for the code. Like I said, go back and watch the previous video if you want to know more. But uh, I think we're just going to test it out on a few different kind of videos. Uh, we got some ideas from the subscribers, so let's go have a look. Also, I just wanted to quickly add, like, if you want to try this out for yourself, uh, you can support me by going to the link in the description below and become a member of the channel. Doesn't matter what tier you pick, I'm going to invite you to a GitHub where you can download all of these scripts and, yeah. Try them out yourself. So you can see here we have some different ideas. So heavy metal picker wanted to have a Boston Dynamics robot video. Yeah, we can try that. Okay, so I went ahead. I grabbed this video about some Boston Dynamics uh, robots. So let's have a listen to it. Why have legs? For me, legs are about access. Your opportunity to go more places is just better. So if I want a robot that can not only walk around a floor like this, but they can go upstairs, climb ladders, maybe I can take it into the woods or I can take it into a crumbling building. Or in the case of NASA's Valkyrie robot, they want to take it into space. Okay, so I think we're gonna try to run this and see what we can get out of this Boston Dynamics video. Okay, so let's just change up the file names here. Let's do BD for Boston Dynamics. Let's go down here and put output to BD2, right? All right, uh, let's open this. Uh, we also want to check the frames. So yeah, let's run it. So the first thing we're going to see now is kind of the word count we are aiming for. And here comes the frames. Perfect. Next is probably going to be the whisper 
API, audio transcription. So this was every word that was said in the video. And of course the next is gonna be the description of the frames. And yeah, let's check it out. So here you can kind of see the description obtained from the Vision API. And here is kind of the revised description. This looks too long to be honest. But remember, we can adjust this. But uh, that's fine. We're just gonna leave it for now. We're just gonna have a listen. We're not gonna do any adjustments now. We're just gonna go straight on to the next clip, I think. So let's hit play. Advances in robotics are showcased with robots displaying impressive mobility in diverse settings from city sidewalks to snowy forests. We see a bipedal robot maneuvering through doors and running outdoors, a robot flipping over barriers and another climbing scaffolds. A woman underscores the versatility of legs for robots, emphasizing their potential in exploration and space missions, as with NASA's Valkyrie robot. These scenes underscore the technological strides in robotics. Okay, so that was probably like 10 seconds too long. Other than that, yeah, I think it was quite good. Remember, we can also get this uh, like, um, like a text output if you just wanted to do that. But I think we're just going to leave that now and try a new clip. Okay, so what I did is I collected a few more clips. I just ran them through the system. And I, now we're just going to focus on the result, right? We're just going to play the original clip. Then we're going to take a look at kind of the analyzed clip or the translated described clip, whatever you want to call it. So let's run a few clips and see if we yeah, find some cool results. So this is kind of the original, so let's start with this. Sam Altman, the co-founder and ousted leader, and will now return to OpenAI as CEO. We know that these negotiations have been going on in the last 24 hours, so it was unclear what that actually looked like, but it looks like there is a preliminary agreement in place at the moment. Okay, so this was kind of, uh, yeah, something I found on YouTube, like today from like Sam Altman, all the stuff that happened in the weekend. And we ran it through, and now let's hear kind of the, the altered version, or like the analyzed version of this. The video showcases a news segment with a headline announcing that Sam Altman will reassume the CEO position at OpenAI. The news anchor, clad in a pink blazer, reports <laughs> the development with professionalism. Ooh. Meanwhile, footage of Sam Altman engaging with an audience on stage is shown, indicative of his active role in the tech community. Okay, so I think this works. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole clip, but yeah, not bad. I like that it mentioned what kind of dress she was wearing, the news anchor. <laughs> I also captured this video. Whoops. So one thing that kind of concerns me just in general, you know, maybe not with the most advanced lifters, but, you know, early guys, they'll tell me they had a really high protein breakfast and it was just three eggs. I mean, 18 grams of protein in a meal. How many are you having in your day? Three? That doesn't really add up. You know, it's a uh, pretty basic rule of thumb just to follow if you're trying to gain muscle, right? If you're you know, actually starting a lifting routine, is to do at least a gram of protein per pound of body weight, right? So if you're a 180 pound dude, how many does that mean you need in a day, right? 180. God, how many eggs are that? So again, this is Sam Sulek, like that uh, he's blowing up on YouTube, I think. So pretty cool guy. Uh, but let's have a listen to the system's interpretation of that clip. In the video, a person expresses their concern about a common misconception regarding protein intake among individuals new to lifting weights. The speaker highlights that some newcomers believe they are consuming a high protein meal by eating three eggs <laughs> which only provides 18 grams of protein, suggesting that this is inadequate given their daily protein needs. To address this, the individual recommends a basic rule of thumb for those aiming to gain muscle, consuming at least one gram of protein per pound of body weight each day. For example, a person weighing 180 pounds should aim to consume 180 grams of protein daily to support their lifting routine and muscle growth. Okay. okay, so that was pretty spot on. That was exactly what he said in the video. So I think that turned out pretty good and the timing was perfect. Uh, do we have any other videos here? I think I captured like... Uh, so one of my favorite YouTube videos this week was... Th major parts this video. Obtaining something like ChatGPT. There's the stage one pre-training and stage two fine-tuning. In the pre-training stage, you get a ton of text from the internet. 
you need a cluster of GPUs. So these are special purpose uh, sort of in the stage. So this is Andre Karpate explaining like how uh, some kind of introduction of how you can train ChatGPT. So this is from a video called an intro to large language models. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. So I also ran this through. So this was a bit longer. So this was two minutes. So let's see how this turned out. We're not going to watch the full thing, but let's have a short clip of this. In this video presentation, the speaker is explaining the two primary stages involved in training a language model like ChatGPT, which involves significant computational resources and expertise. That's quite good. In the stage one pre-training process, vast amounts of textual data are obtained from the internet and processed using a cluster of highly specialized and expensive GPUs designed for parallel processing. Compressing the information so you can see this is quite long, right? It's two minutes. So let's skip ahead a bit. Floyd and monitored. Any misbehavior identified in the AI's responses is corrected by reviewing the interaction and having a human provide the correct answer. This new corrected dialogue is then fed back into the training data to help the model learn from its mistakes. Yeah, I think this was very good. I listened to the full thing like earlier. I'm not going to put you through that, but it kind of, yeah. Since it already has kind of the audio input, it can really rec recreate what he said in the video. So that was pretty good. So yeah, after we have watched a few clips now, I don't know. I think like this improved it if we go back and see the other video. On the other video, I was more focused like on the voiceover part. Uh, but I, mm, I think I got some work to do. This was just something I wanted to share right away before tuning it. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool. So I just wanted to share this. But I see I got some more work fine-tuning the prompts and stuff before I think we can use this for some other stuff. If you have any ideas on how we can fine-tune it to maybe get some more out of it, let me know. Other than that, yeah, thank you for tuning in and look out for Sunday's videos. There's going to be something similar but a bit different. I'm looking forward to that. And yeah, see you again soon. Have a great weekend.